Nothing working. Studio tour! It's been such a long time since I've done a studio tour, and now it is November 2023. I think it's time for a studio tour because the last time I gave one of these, everything in this room is different, except for this table. But even the topper for this table is different. The rails are still the same, but so much has changed and it's never gonna stop changing because you're never done upgrading for your hobby. So a little bit about this tour is I'm gonna show you around obviously, but I'm also gonna show you where I came from. And I also wanna show you where I want to go, even if I probably can't afford it. So we're gonna start here with the background. This is actually a non-hardware part, so it's easy to show off. Just some shelves I made, but it definitely has changed in the past few years. And also you can see that we have like these long bulbs now on dimmer switches. Also have some of my guitars back here because some of you may know that Melissa and I are musicians in Louisiana. Above these lights, we have some more lights. Actually gives that little purple hue and also a spotlight to highlight any games that we have playing that go below our logo. Here, I'll put this here to show you what it looks like whenever it's all said and done. Any storage I need is close at hand on these shelves here. All the remotes I use here are in these little remote caddies that are really easy to grab whenever I need them for the live show. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. The floor in here is wrecked. Wrecked from never being fixed before and also wrecked from all of these rolling chairs that are in here. I had a choice to either fix it and watch it get wrecked again or just leave it as is. It's off camera. It's a studio working space. So I guess I'm fine with it. So you're going to see that uh, a lot more right now. This is the gaming table. This is a uh, old grandma's table. In fact, I did a short on this about how to build your own. It's over on our TikTok. This faux wood play mat is from Game Toppers LLC. The wood is just cheap wood from Home Depot. And these corners are shadow boxes from Michaels. I also added these cup holders on the side and these are made for boats. So look up marine cup holders if you're looking for these. All right, let's move on and talk about the lighting. These are just two soft boxes here with some grid work on it. And each of them have three bulbs in it that uh, it's actually suspended from the ceiling. I've recently switched everything in here over to natural lighting because I was using cool lights before and warm lights when I first started. And I think I like the way natural light looks. There's no real rules to that. It's just, it's whatever your eyes can handle. Uh, just make sure you set your temperatures. Speaking of temperatures, these lights I use to lighten up our faces and you can actually set the temperatures on the back. And I like these because they're knob based, so you never have to reset them before each stream. So to recap for lighting, these lights are just for show. That spotlight highlights the game. These lights above here, they're kind of to highlight the table and also put a little backlighting onto the people. And this is the one that really highlights our faces. You can actually fool someone into thinking you have a great camera if you have some really good lighting. So where did I start with lighting? I want to say it wasn't too far from this. I already had some soft boxes ready to go, but if I were to redo it again, maybe some clip lights might be the way to go. Uh, even lamps. What you want to do is not have any direct light onto your source. You want to bounce light as much as possible, even diffuse it as much as possible. You may have noticed on the ones that face us, I put some diffuser on the front panels just to make sure that that are not being too hot, if you know what I mean. Where do I want to go with lighting? Well, for the most part, I don't think it'll get much better for the value. And even with value out the window, I just can't see myself getting anything too crazy in this space. What I've done with these front lights, this is a recent addition because I do filmmaking and I got tired of the lights I had which were these cool lights and I wanted to switch to natural lighting. I had these ready to go out of my film kit. And so what I did is I set them up in this office and then I said, 
well, time to get some new lights for my film kit. So I have those sitting in a box and these operating every day. All right, let's talk about sound. Personally, I feel like sound is the most important thing you can have. If you don't have good sound, people are gonna tune out quickly. Bad sound is bad sound. There's no artistic bad sound. Well. But in this case, there is no artistic reason to have bad sound. That said, I still think I'm somewhere in the middle of the road here. In fact, you might even hear the AC sound right now. We're in Louisiana, it's hot, I need the air conditioning. So that's gonna cut into my sound issues. All things considered, we have decent sound here. It's Rode M5 mics hooked up to a Yamaha mixer. Let me give you a closer look. These are Rode M5 mics, which are condenser mics. It's called a matched pair. And I wanted to make sure I had four of them because there's usually four players here at the table. As you can see, I kind of treat them like shotgun mics, but they are not shotgun mics. So if I were to go for the next step in this evolution, probably try to find some shotgun mics that could do the job, especially if budget's not an issue. They're all XLR mics and they all feed into this mixer. It's not actually recording, but it is on right now. Hence the sound bar's moving <laughs> while I'm recording this. So that's a MG10XU and that's a USB mixer that feeds right into the computer. I love it. So what I noticed when I was showing you the sound and the lights so far, I'm showing you some GVM lights, which is not really a name brand, but it's becoming one, but Rode, Yamaha. Name brands kind of matter. There's been so much gear that I've replaced that hasn't been name brand. And if I had just spent a little bit extra money to get the name brand thing, I would have been far happier. At least I think I would have been. Because when I'm buying that cheap stuff, I'm like, it's got to be the same. And it really isn't. In fact, I'm going to show you why it isn't showing you the cameras. So I don't know if this is a controversial take anymore because it's kind of been called out at this point. The Logitech does not make good web cameras. I said it. Anything sub $100 from Logitech is not going to be a great camera these days because other companies have stepped up to the plate and done it better. That said, here's our first camera, Logitech 930C. Uh, I got this one really early on. It's the same camera probably from the last studio tour. It's our, it's our close-up camera, and if it doesn't work that day, I don't pressure it into working. I just say, all right, take the day off. We'll come at you next time. It's bright, but it's the only way I can get this shot. This is the PTZ Logitech. It's the last Logitech in our lineup that's still here, and this is the camera I use any day I'm going solo, it's the one that's on me. It's okay quality because it has an optical zoom, not a digital zoom, and it doesn't work sometimes. Just beyond the sometimes working Logitech PTZ is the Avermedia 515. It has a wide field of view and it's 4K. It has a 100 degree field of view, and that's wide enough to catch all four players for our live stream. Up top, we have something that not a lot of people have because it's usually just a big waste of money. But this is a, uh, a moving camera. It's the Avermedia 513. It is on a track and it does like a circling shot around our table there. It looks really cool, but it's quite an investment. I want to state this again. You don't need stuff like that. When we started, I think we had two, maybe three cameras. I think you can get started on board game media specifically. You need a camera on the table, you need a camera on the people. But that's it. When I'm on the road, we have a two camera kit, Avermedia cameras that are PTZ cameras, and that way I can get an optical zoom going on the table or on the people wherever I need to do it. And finally in the camera lineup is the Avermedia 540 PTZ camera. This is the camera that does all the zoom ins on our board games during the live streams. Anytime I'm unboxing something, It'll get really, really close on cards, on little pieces. It does a great job at getting really close on everything. PTZ cameras are kind of a new addition to this studio setup. And it was after pandemic times when people were selling off these PTZ cameras they had bought for their offices. And I managed to get some pretty cheap on eBay. And for the most part, you can still find them on eBay fairly inexpensive. The problem with buying things like that on eBay is sometimes you get some that don't work. 
So what I've done is I bought some of the Avermedia 520s, which I mentioned earlier, thinking that maybe they wouldn't work. And some were missing parts, such as the power supply, and that was kind of hard to find. But I've been lucky so far that everything is working, but I'm kind of worried with so much movement, how long do they last? I don't really know. That said, I need to take you to the graveyard of webcams, which is just the Logitech Brio died last year. Uh, this is the only webcam that's actually died on me. So don't get webcams like the Logitech Brio. For the most part, that's the tour. I don't really have a lot else going on. Like there's a lot of things I covered in the other tour, such as, you know, all my lights are controlled by this. I can turn off everything just by hitting some buttons or I could turn on everything by hitting some buttons. And then I have the same computer I had in the other tour, which was after the laptop. Laptops are fine, but they have loud fans. I also have two monitors here. They're just 2K 32 inch Acer monitors. Nothing fancy, just big enough for me to see everything going on. And everything else is just kind of happened. I think I went overboard on the, on the sound dampening, but I found a really good deal on like a hundred something pieces of it. So I was like, all right, I'll go for it. <laughs> and just ended up using a lot of it. So it's a big room. This room is made of concrete, concrete walls, concrete floor. Uh, the ceiling's not concrete, but most of it is concrete. If you wanna know about software and stuff like that, just ask me in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. I guess all that's left is for me to ask you to subscribe and make sure you follow our journey here. We're trying to put out new content like this one. We're also gonna be putting out our stuff from Twitch like we always have been doing, but I need to do more FaceTime with YouTube just like this. So until next time, the box is closed.